This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, because you got a choice. You got a choice to be miserable, be happy. You got a, a choice to be free or bound. Amen? Everybody has a choice. You can be an idiot, hello, a moron, or be righteous in Christ, one or the other. You can be deceived or know the truth. You can be a seeker of life or a seeker of death. Which one do you want to be today? Amen? God lays it out all for us. He says, I'm not going to interfere with your will, but I'm going to definitely try and impose my will in it. So everybody get it. I'm telling you, we are reaching a place right now It's just powerful. While we were praising and so forth and praying in the Spirit, the Lord gave me a prophetic word that I want to continue on something. But he said, I don't want to give it to you right now. I want to give it to you so that it's recorded. So let's pray in the Spirit for a minute. Thank you, Master. One of the things that I believe was released Friday night was about 90 days. And one of the things that the spirit, the, uh, the voice, uh, of prophetic voice that was released, and the prophetic voice that I heard was the area that I'm going to bring my body through the fire for 90 days. I'm bringing my body through the fire for 90 days. I'm going to purify my body. I'm going to prepare them. I'm going to reset many things. I'm going to start new things. Things are going to be different. Because we're getting to enter a whole other new world. Everything is going to change. Things will be done differently economically. All kinds of things will be changing. And he said, I'm going to purify my body. I'm going to bring them through the fire. And those that are willing to come through the fire will come out precious and prepared. I'm going to shake and I'm going to test. I'm going to test everyone's faith. I'm going to test everyone's desires. I'm going to test everyone. You know, one of the things that we don't realize is that God qualifies us for a next level. And if we're not willing to go through it, he's going to cut us through. You know, I, I, I see all of these entanglements and it's like um, strings attached to people where through the fire they burn off. They just, they burn off. You know, when, a, when somebody has a, what do you call that thing? A string or whatever. Piece of, you know what, I take a lighter as long as it doesn't blow up their whole hand. or you know, They burn it off or cut it off or whatever. But the fire is going to, Burn away all of the garbage and anything that's connected to the heart so that our heart is truly his. See, there's been so many things where people have put before God and don't even realize it. One of the things he said to me today, he said, and we don't even realize we do these things. We try to manipulate his, his grace, his plan. See, grace is God's plan to escape. It's not unmerited favor. Far be it that just God's going to favor you and me. We earn his favor. Amen? Grace is the plan to escape. And Jesus came in the fullness of grace and truth. So that if we follow the grace, which is his plan to escape, it takes cooperation. He's always going to make a way of escape for me and you. Amen? But there's been so much doctrine and so much stuff that's been released that has been connected to people's hearts and minds that's caused them to delay in progressing and cause them to get close to God. One of the things he said to me, and we're going to talk about today, is I'm going to, I'm going to develop a routine for my people. Developing a routine is to maintain a foundation. I'm going to develop a routine for my people. Now, a routine is set by the heart, not by the mind. Rituals are by the mind. 
A routine is by the heart. And it's different. And because he's calling us to a specific routine, and each individual, there might be a difference of a routine in certain areas because he knows exactly what you need to be stronger in where you're weaker. So he's developing a routine to bring us through because what we're about to come out of in these next 90 days is going to be glorious. Although the world is going to continue its trial and chaos, but for me and you, it won't be. God is about to release many things. Remember, we are in the second wind, the whirlwind. The first whirlwind was to what? Rip away and tear away, to expose. Remember, 2020 would be the year where the word evil would be understood. See, people play with the word evil not realizing what evil really is. Because the enemies had people bound, has them distant from the will of God, distant from the presence of God. And he's done that because so many people are self is still first. They haven't reached that place to deny self. And he's bringing us through this fire, refining fire for 90 days. For some people, they're going to lose a lot. For some people, they're going to gain a lot. But, you know, losing everything, sometimes some people have to lose it all to get started over again because they're still holding on to things that are holding on to them. Amen? Would you turn to Matthew 7? Remember, this is a military operation. Amen? This is not some religious thing. Jesus is the commander-in-chief of the military. He's called the Lord of, Lord of hosts. <clears throat> and there's training involved. That's what we call Holy Ghost boot camp. There's enough pew sitters. Amen? There's enough people in the choir. We need soldiers. Warriors, <laughs> people willing to fight. Matthew 7, 7. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. He says what? Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Well, let me tell you, ask, seek, and knock is a process of building a foundation by developing a routine. Of course, the word says if he asks for something stupid, you know, like to fulfill your own lustful desires, you ain't going to get it. But you see, when the heart begins to change, you're not asking for dumb things. Oh, Lord, restore this. Oh, Lord, restore that. You don't need to ask for anything to be restored. When you get in position, he will restore everything that's supposed to be restored. In his time, in his way. Anything that we try to manipulate his will to get him to do something according to your will always ends up in chaos. And if you bug him enough for it, he's going to give it to you and watch you fall on your face. Hallelujah. Ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. In verse 8, for everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be open. And what, or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, know, being evil, know how to give good fruits, good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven, give good things to those who what? Ask him. But it says, your father in heaven. That means relationship. Amen? Relationship. Therefore, now he gives you a conclusion in this. He says, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, what else? Is everybody with me? Hallelujah. Then what? Do also to them. Wow. 
Whatever you want someone to do, that's called the law of sowing and reaping. Hallelujah. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the what? Narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. We were talking about this the other day. And, and you know, for the area of the process of, of building a foundation and developing a, a routine, God warns us. He said, listen, if you're going to really want to do this as I'm showing you how to develop a routine, it's so that you can overcome because there's constantly resistance towards you. Anybody, uh, the enemy is always going to bring resistance as you get closer to the Lord. Amen. So he says, the, that way is difficult. It's much resistant. But man, to get to the other way, in other words, to, to get to heaven, there's resistance. To get to hell, there's a slide. It's one of those water slides. People get up on time and go, wee! They don't know they're, getting, they're not going in the water. They're going in the grill. Hallelujah. And verse, thir verse 13, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in it. Yeah, because they're, they're on the slide. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. Difficult is the way to lead. That means that God is going to develop a routine. In fact, that's one of the whole things the Holy Spirit begins to start with you. He begins to develop a routine. First of all, he comes and he talks about discipline. 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 Discipline has nothing to do. The purpose of discipline is to remove us from feeling. Amen? People go do other things because they have a goal and, and a purpose. So in this, they're willing to do whatever it takes to fulfill the goal. And so they begin to ignore how they feel. You know, many people, in other words, so, so many people's goal is money. So no matter how they feel, they're going to work. Hello. Or certain other things. So we don't allow feelings to dictate our decisions, do we? Amen. In verse 15, how he warns us, he says what? Be, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. Hello. But in reality, they're ravenous wolves. So there's going to be many Christians that come to you and try and redirect you. You will know them by their what? Their fruits, their works. You know what you're going to know them by? Their desires. Why? Because the core of desire is where? In your heart. You'll know them what is their greatest desire. And they maintain their desires. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, which tree represents spirit. Nor can a, uh, and every, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown where? Into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, by their desires, you're going to know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? And then I'll declare them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness. Why did they pray? See, they might have started off right and they ended up practicing lawlessness because they never developed and maintained a routine. Everybody got it. Because a, a developed routine will maintain the foundation. It maintains a relationship. Again, a ritual is out of the mind. A routine is out of the heart. It's totally different. Totally. Now, you may start off in the mind and hopefully it gets to the heart. But why waste time in the mind? Let's get right to the heart. Amen? That takes humility and humbleness. 
difficult, much resistance <laughs> to the routine that leads to life. But it's open easy, no resistance to the, uh, uh, of the rituals that leads to death. So there's a blessing or a blessed routine, and there's a cursed one. Amen? A ritual is associated with religious, religious trying to a false humility. In other words, the area of how a person dresses, uh, ceremonial. It's all associated with outward performance. Amen? Where a routine is an inward transition. So there's something that's inward compared to outward. And Deuteronomy 4. Glory. Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. <laughs> the Word of God is what? Worth the drive. Praise God. <laughs> Glory. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And in His presence is fullness of joy. And the Father seeks true worshipers. You know, a true worshiper is out of the heart. That's a part of his routine. It's to worship. In verse 25, Deuteronomy 4, 25. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. And Moses is speaking. He said, when you beget, when you beget children and grandchildren and have grown old in the land and act corruptly and make carved image <clears throat> in the form of anything, and do evil in the sight of the Lord your God to provoke him to anger, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you will soon utterly perish from the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. You will not prolong your days in it, but will be utterly destroyed. Can you imagine that on every corner sign? If you do this, you're going to die. That's how it was in the Old Testament. Do you know that when children were disobedient, they used to stone them to death? The parents knew that that kid was out of there. So they would bring them into the judge, and they would determine, stone him to death. Of course, they had abortions and everything else, offering up to Moloch and all the other, Moloch and all the other demonic forces. In verse 27, and it says, And the Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be left few in number among the nations where the Lord will drive you. And there you will serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. Now you've got to remember, B.C., we used to do these things. Amen? Money was a god. It used to speak to everyone. Hello. Verse 29. But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if what? If you seek him with all of your heart and with all of your soul. That is part of your routine. When you are in distress and all these things come upon you, in the latter days, are we in the latter days? Yeah. When you turn to the Lord your God and obey his voice, for the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not forsake you nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers which he swore to them. For ask now concerning the days that are past which were before you since the day that God created man on the earth and ask from one end of heaven to the other whether any great thing like this has happened or anything like it has been heard. I want you to know that we are in a time where nothing has ever happened the way it is happening right now. Did any people ever hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as you have heard and lived? Or did God ever try to go and take for himself a nation from the midst of another nation by trials and by signs, by wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and by great terrors according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. To you it was shown 
that you might know that the Lord himself is God. There is none other besides him. Out of heaven he let you hear his voice, that he might instruct you on the earth and show you his great fire. And you heard his words out of the midst of the fire. And because he loved your fathers, therefore he chose their descendants after them. And he brought you out of Egypt with his presence, with his mighty power. Again, Egypt is associated with bondage. We are ruled, this world is ruled by Babylon. Amen? It's the same system as Egypt. It's called bondage. We're going to talk more about that Tuesday. So in this, he's saying, look it. He loves you, and there's the only way out. He says, I'm going to bring you out with my presence and my power. My presence and my power. Amen? So that's going to have to be established by a, developing a, uh, uh, a routine to establish a foundation so that his presence and his power is active all the time in your life. He said... And because he loved your fathers, therefore he chose their descendants after them. And he brought you out of Egypt with his presence and with his mighty power, driving out from before you nations and greater and mightier than you to bring you in to give you their land as an inheritance as it is this day. Therefore know this and consider it in your heart, not in your mind, that the Lord himself is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. There is no other you shall therefore keep his statutes and commandments. Those are parts of routines for them. Which I command you today that it may go well with you and with your children after you and that you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord your God is giving you for all time. Again, what does he say? This should be a routine. Seek with all of your heart. What is to develop a routine so that the Lord can build the foundation of your life. Let me tell you, there's a routine that leads to life and a routine that leads to death. The one that leads to death I call a ritual because it's out of the mind. 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4. Developing a routine. We call it a blessed routine. So some of you might say, oh, you're ritualistic. No, I'm just routine. <laughs> See, because they don't know what routine is. First Thessalonians 4. And start at verse 1. Everybody there? Everybody Okay. Developing a routine. Let's speak it. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound what? More and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk into what? Please God. Now, abound more and more. That's called building a routine. Amen? For you know that what commandments... We gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Your what? Sanctification. Your separation from the world. Your disconnect from the world. That you should abstain from sexual immorality. That's lustful things. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel. That cannot be done without discipline and a routine. Amen? Amen. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and in honor. Possessing, in other words, your vessel is called flesh. We all have a flesh suit. That's what keeps us here on the earth. But we're all spirits, aren't we? Amen. So you got to possess, you have dominion over your flesh house. By a developed routine that leads to sanctification and honor. Amen. It's called a blessed routine. It leads to life. Anything that's not leading to life is leading to death. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> Verse 4 again. 
that you should, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he rejects this, does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his what? His Holy Spirit. Powerful. <clears throat> Again, this is a, not a ritual from the mind. It's a blessed routine from the heart. It's different. Colossians 2. Most rituals, people want to be seen by their participation of the ritual. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. There are many occult rituals. It's usually an outward thing. They, they do sacrifices of humans and animals and so forth. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice for me and you. Amen? In fact, he built the greatest routine. He went up to people and he said, follow me. Follow me. He took these guys who were out fishing. Follow me. He said, come on, I'll make you fishers of men. Why? Because the word believe means to follow. Someone says that they're a believer or not a follower is a liar. It's really simple. And you'll know them by their fruit because if they refuse to follow the ways of God and believe in the Bible, which is his written words recorded, then you know they're not a follower. They may call themselves a Christian, but they're in a ritual out of the mind and out of a routine, out of the heart. Amen? God wants our heart. He knows it's the core of all desire. And the greatest thing a father wants is for us to see what he sees. Amen? If there really is a relationship, then there's a place that you want to please him in everything you do. In verse 16, let's speak it. So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding the festival or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substances of who? Christ, the anointed one and his anointing. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom all the body, nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, the basic rituals of the world, why are, though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to these rituals or regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using and according to the commandments and doctrines of who? Men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom, and self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh or the indulgence of sin. Amen. These are doctrines of rituals, rejecting a sanctified, disciplined life and developing a routine that builds a relationship and a solid foundation with the Lord. In Matthew 15, I can tell you that many people's foundations are about to get crushed because there's too many cracks in them. It's not solid. We are in the process of rebuilding, reconnecting, renewing, refreshing. God is making things new. Glory. Welcome to the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew 15, verse 
Matthew 15, verse 1. Is everybody there? Everybody okay? Do we need to lock the door? <laughs> Let's speak it. Then the scribes and Pharisees <clears throat> who were from Jerusalem came to Jesus saying, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of elders, the tradition, the rituals of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. And he answered and said to them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your traditions or what? Rituals. For God commanded, yes, honoring your father and your mother. And he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me, a gift is to God. Then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus, you have made the commandment of God no effect by your traditions and your rituals. Hypocrites. Boy, there's a lot of hypocrites these days. I think that's a new animal. Could put some in a zoo. It's a hypocrite race. <laughs> Verse 7, hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But their heart is what? So they have no, no, there's no true routine. It's all ritual. And in vain they worship me, teach it as doctrines, the commandments of men. When he had called the multitudes to him, he said to them, hear and understand. Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this is defiles a man. Why? Because you're going to hear the desires, aren't you? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Then his disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? But he answered and said to them, Who cares? <laughs> Every plant which my heavenly Father has planted will be what? Uprooted. Do you hear this? Ninety days of uprooting. Let them alone. They are blind leading leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into the ditch. Uprooting for 90 days. Traditions of outward rituals, not routines of godly discipline that converts the stony heart into a heart that's in the hands of God for molding. Again, they worship from the head, not from the heart. And don't get me wrong, sometimes when we first start, in other words, when people come into our discipleship house, they're given specific prayers to pray. They might not get it. Yet. They may be in the mind. But they've got to sow to advance. You sow your way out of everything. If you're not willing to sow, and I'm not talking about money, I'm talking about out of your mouth, light, life, speaking. You must sow, sow, and sow. Then you'll reach so what? And when you fall into trials, don't cry about it. Sow out. But you don't understand. I don't want to. None of us needs to. Don't get on the phone and tell everybody you're going to poop all over them. You don't need to do that. Go to the throne instead of the phone. Why? And then sow your way out of it. If people would sow out, man, we'd be so much more advanced. Instead, they grumble and complain and put themselves, they just dig a ditch deeper and deeper. Then they want to bring everybody into it. Hey, let me invite you into my ditch. Don't accept the invitation. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 9. You know, you don't have to answer every text. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> there, that's why he says, seek me first. 
See, if, if, if people would go to the Lord first, many times they wouldn't be respond, responding to many things because they actually react and don't realize it. 1 Corinthians 9. Hallelujah. Verse 19. It's speaking, for though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. <clears throat> and go and to the Jews, I became what? A Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law as without the law, not being without the law toward God, but under the Lord towards Christ that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. That takes a discipline routine. Amen? Now this I do for the gospel's sake, not that I may be partaker of it with you, that I may be partaker of it with you. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the what? Prize. Run in such a way that you may what? Obtain it. Well, look at How are you going to run in a race without a routine? Even a runner disciplines himself to go out and practice. Amen. Till he builds a routine. And he builds a routine in, in, in the rhythm, in the breathing, and everything so he can go long distance. Amen. Verse 25. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to attain a perishable crown, but you and I for an imperishable crown. Hmm. Therefore I run thus not with uncertainty that I, thus I fight not as one beats the air. But I do what? I discipline my body, my flesh. And bring it into what? Subjection. My spirit now runs my flesh, not my flesh running my spirit. When I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Hallelujah. He's serving from the heart. Not serving to be seen. That's ritualistic. He's disciplined in a blessed routine leading to life. And Psalm 49. Psalm 49 and verse 10. Glory. It says, for he sees wise men do what? Die. Likewise, the fool and the senseless person perish and leave their wealth to others. Their inner thought is that their houses will last forever, their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man, though in, in honor, does not remain. He is like the beasts that perish. This is the way of those who are foolish. Now listen. A person that's foolish is usually ritualistic, no routine. And their prosperity, and of their prosperity who approve their sayings. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. Death shall feed on them. Wow. Does everybody see that? The upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. And their beauty shall be consumed in the grave, far from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. Do not be afraid when one becomes rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dies, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Though while he lives, he is blessed himself. For men will praise you when you are, do well for yourself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. A man who is in honor yet does not understand is like the beast 
that perish. Rituals of desire that promote a self as God's. Deceptive food they eat, he says. They eat deceptive food. But they become the food for death. So a person that's eating deceptive food actually becomes a food for death. Does everybody understand? In Isaiah 26. Again, that is because of a cursed routine or ritualistics. Isaiah 26. <clears throat> this is where the things are turning around right now. The Bible says that the devil seeks whom he may devour. He is a hunter. Things are turning around where the hunter is now being hunted. This is why God is bringing us through these things. He's bringing us to a place where you have never hated evil like you've hated now. He wants to bring a place of hatred for evil so that we fight for righteousness. And stop petting evil. <clears throat> Verse 1, Isaiah 26, verse 1. Let's speak it. In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. Is everybody there? Okay. We have a strong city. God will appoint salvation for the walls and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation, which keeps the truth, may what? Enter. You know, yesterday, I don't know if you saw the president. He said, we bow to no one but God Almighty. We put no need down to no one but God Almighty. See, God put that man into place to turn this country back to him. That's what it's all about. It's a country that's turning back to God. Where other countries are turning away from God. But there are those who are coming because they're following this president and watching God prosper them even though they're going through stuff. Amen? But God put this president in office. He called him for this job. He knew he couldn't get bought out. Verse 3. And said, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah, the Lord is everlasting strength. For he brings down those who dwell on high, the lofty city. He lays it low. He lays it low to the ground. He brings it down to the dust. The foot shall tread on it, the feet of the poor, and the steps of the needy. The way of the just is uprightness, almost upright. You weigh the path of the just. Yes, in the way of your judgments, O Lord, we have waited for you. The desire of our soul is for your name, for the remembrance of you. With my soul I desired you in the night. Yes, my spirit within me, I will seek you early. Is that a part of a routine? Amen. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn what? Righteousness. The way of ju just is a blessed routine of the heart, not a ritual of the mind and the head. Amen. 1 Corinthians 3. See, the world loves to spend time in entertainment. They entertain themselves. That's a part of their ritual, entertainment. That's why you got Hollywood, the expression of all kinds of witchcraft. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's nothing going to a movie and whatever. But our hearts should always be in an area of learning. Amen? How can I learn more to advance? Well, God deals with each and every one of something he's trying to bring you through. 
And if you're, if you're, as he's developing a routine, which is on a, building on a solid foundation, he can bring you to places and trust you that you're not going to be misled or kicked off your foundation. Amen? He'll bring you to places different than someone else. So just because someone could do something else doesn't mean you can. Amen? That's why he builds boundaries with us. And as we are established in the boundaries, then he expands the boundaries till the boundaries are removed because you've earned his trust. And he knows that you're going, he's going to be number one. That's where you're always setting him before you. I always set the Lord before me. That's what the psalmist said. Why? So I can have direction. Because I know he's removed my boundaries and I don't want him to go over them. And let me tell you, in your relationship with the Holy Spirit, you'll hear that voice. You're getting close to your boundary. Immediately turn from whatever you're doing. You'll have a conviction come into your heart. Man, I got to stop this. I'm approving something I shouldn't be. <clears throat> verse 5. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 5. Well, happy days. I think I started at the wrong one. Let's start at, ah, yes. Verse 9. Is everybody there? Good. You didn't have too far to go. Let's speak it. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed in how he what? Builds on it. Wow. So if you're not, if you're, if you're not if developing a, a routine that is pleasing to God, is your foundation going to be maintained? No. Very shaky. Verse 11. For no other foundation can anyone lay than in that which is laid by, which is Christ, Jesus Christ. Verse 12. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. Obviously, this is ritual. It's not routine. Amen? That's ritual. For the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If any among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is what? Foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. Wow. I believe God is catching a lot of people these days. Those that thought they were wise. That they were getting away from with things for years and then passing it on to their children. Corruption passed on to corruption. More and more. Generations after generations. It's coming to an end. Psalm 61. So you, what you might call this as God's judgment. Amen? I'm not saying it's his wrath. God is bringing judgment on the earth. He's shaking as much as he can. I think he shakes as much as he can without destroying it, you know? So he's shaking all the wickedness. He's exposed and everything is about shaking so that things come up to the surface. <clears throat> he's trying to rescue people from his wrath. Because nobody escapes his wrath. Psalm 61, verse 1. Let's speak it. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will 
cry out to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That should be a part of your routine. It should be automatic. In other words, when a routine has been established, there's things that you do automatically without even thinking. You know it ain't right. You're not going to prove it. You know you're manipulating. Amen? You know it. And you know when you're a mess. You know it. Amen? But that's okay. You can get cleaned up through the blood, chastening, a little spanking here and there. Vomit up the deceptive food and start eating the righteous food. Amen? Verse 3. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your what? Tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life. His years are many generations. He shall abide before God forever and prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. I will sing praise to your name when? Forever. Now look at the next verse. That I may daily perform my routine. Somebody get it? That I may daily perform my what? Routine. Not ritual. Routine. But he said, listen, I'm going to praise you. Why? Because God's presence. Without his presence, there's no power. People are still trying to do things without God's power, without God's presence. That's why he says, forsake not to what? Assemble. Hallelujah. Daily perform my routine that leads to life eternal. Psalm 63. Oh, God, you are my God. Early will I what? Is that a part of a routine? My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary. Are we in the sanctuary? To see your power in your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with the marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise you with what? Joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night. Watch this. Because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. See, the routine keeps you close. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for jekylls. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory. But the mouth of those who speak lies shall be what? Shall be Stopped. Hmm. And we'll close in Romans 8. Developing a blessed routine. Unless the Lord builds a house, we labor in vain. Verse 18, Romans 8, 18. Everybody there? Let's speak it. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed where? In us. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Hey, let me tell you. That means there's got to be some kind of developed routine maintained. Why? So the solid foundation stays. So that you can be conformed into his image and likeness. 
For the creation, was, the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be de delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So you got to understand, everything is corrupt here. The earth has been corrupted. It's been defiled. Everything is corrupt. The rule of this earth is Satan's kingdom under a Babylonian system. It's corrupt. It's ruled by deception and fear. And of course, greed and lust. Verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the ad adoption of the redemption of our body. Hallelujah. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is not seen, that is seen is not hope. And why does one still hope for what he sees? But if, in other words, that's physical, isn't it? Verse 25. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Now, that means endurance. Verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered or what we call understood. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together to the, for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be what? Conformed into the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. We were predestined in his image with power, P-O-W-E-R, which means positioned, amen, a positioned overseer with the eternal realm. Everyone say, I'm a positioned overseer with the eternal realm. That's called power. It can only come from God's presence. Amen. And a righteous, blessed routine. What a solid foundation. Keeps you going. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he what? Also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. Wow. Wow. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Oh, snap. Praise God. So you think it's important about building a routine? Don't let anybody tell you it's not. Somebody tries to tell you you're religious, tell me he's got a demon. It's real simple. Praise God. Hey, Amen. They'll stay away from you. <laughs> Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Your word is true and won't return void. And Lord, we so desire to cooperate with the Holy Spirit builder to build a routine that is pleasing to you so that we may have the ability to surrender to you to build our foundation. For only you can build the foundation with our cooperation. So, Lord, I'm just asking today that through each and every one, an understanding will come where they become ritualistic or they're part of the routine, living from the heart or from the mind, and promise to give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.